Hey everybody, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a quick look at Windows 10 build 21354. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last few builds and indeed the last build video that we did. So diving straight in, the first notable change is with the news and interest widget down here. Um, by default, for some crazy reason, I don't know who at Microsoft decided this was a good idea, but by default the news and interest flyout opens when you simply hover over the weather widget down here. That is terrible, it's super intrusive, um, but Microsoft has finally added the option to disable that. I don't know why it's not disabled by default, but if you come in here, you can see that open on hover is enabled, and if we uncheck it here, that will no longer happen. I can highlight it and the flyout will simply not open until I physically click the button, which is much preferred, and like I said, I have no idea why this isn't the default behavior, but hey, there you go. In addition to that, Microsoft is also um, adding a Manage Interests button up the top here, which will open Microsoft Edge and allow you to customize what shows up within the News and Interests flyout here. So if we give it a second to load, you'll see that we can discover interests, so we can add things. Let's add technology, why not? Let's also add gaming. No sports, I don't like sports. Um, and maybe that's it. I'm <laughs> That's probably everything we need for now. And then we can also check out our followed interests here. We can even search for more interests. So if you want to search for, say, uh, finances, we do personal finance, add that as well. And so now all three of those topics should show up through here if we refresh this. Checking for the latest news. Absolutely nothing changed. Over time, Microsoft will start adding things that you've selected as interested in to this sort of area here, which is kind of nice. Uh, but there you go, that's the new uh, improvements to news and interests. Not any huge new changes there, but nice changes nonetheless. Right, moving on. The next notable change is a change that was introduced in the last build, but we didn't do a video on it because it was simply literally the only change, really. Um, new icons in the File Explorer. There are a whole bunch of new icons within the File Explorer now, and they are very, very nice. They're Fluent Design-esque, so they sort of match up with the rest of the app icons in the apps list and whatnot, and you can find them all over the place. They look really nice, like I said. Um, and Microsoft is still adding more and more over time, so this isn't everything, and they will be tweaked and tuned um, before final. So good to see that we're seeing new icons here, and these will actually even show up in some legacy error dialogues and whatnot, so that's also really nice to see. Just It's good to see Microsoft touching legacy parts of Windows and updating it to be more consistent with the modern parts of Windows. I really like what I'm seeing here. All right, the other new change in this build is a sort of reshuffle of the apps list. So Microsoft is trying to clean up the apps list as best as it can by hiding things that most people don't use um, and also elevating apps that people do use to the main apps list. So in the last build, we talked about Notepad. Notepad is now in the main apps list here and it also has a new icon. Uh, and following in its footsteps is Paint, the legacy Paint app. Paint has a new icon now and it's now in the main apps list as well as Snipping Tool for some reason. Uh, why they've promoted the legacy snipping tool when they clearly say that snipping tool is being moved into snip and sketch I don't know but both of these legacy apps are now updatable via the Microsoft store um, and for some reason snipping tool is now bundled with snip and sketch so it's like Microsoft knows they're the same tool yet when you install one the other will automatically get installed that said you can uninstall snip and, uh, snipping tool here and that will remove it as well as snip and sketch so <laughs> You can't have one without the other for some reason, even though they basically do the same thing. That is absurd, but there you go. Again, this is a preview build, so maybe there's time for them to fix that and whatnot. But for some reason, as of right now, they're bundling Snipping Tool with Snip and Sketch, and you cannot have one without the other. They have to both be installed or both be uninstalled, which is just... That's so Microsoft, right? Anyway, you can also uninstall Paint, which is nice. And because you can uninstall it, it's now updatable via the Microsoft Store similar to Notepad. So if I ever did uninstall it, I could simply go to the Microsoft Store here and in theory, reinstall it through this UI here, which is super nice. So good to see that. Uh, good to see Microsoft adding things to the apps list and removing things. If you come down here, you'll see that the Windows Accessories folder is gone. Uh, the only drop down folder that by default now is the Ease of Access folder. Uh, and Windows Tools, the Windows Tools folder is no longer a folder. It's a icon slash shortcut that if you click on it, it will open up the File Explorer and show you all of the programs that are usually in the Windows Tools folder. So there you have it. Now jumping into settings real quick, there's a couple of changes in here that I think are worth noting. Uh, first of which, if we jump into devices, there's now a cameras uh, option here 
which allows you to configure your camera hardware and even add a network camera. So this is part of Microsoft's continued efforts of porting some legacy control panel stuff into the modern settings app. And you can see here we can now configure um, camera hardware within the modern settings app, which is nice to see. We can change the brightness, contrast, etc., etc. Although I think I'm going to blur that because I'm not looking my best right now. Uh, if we move on to uh, the update and security area here, you'll see that delivery optimization has now been promoted out of the Windows Update page and into its own dedicated page here. So you can now quickly get access to that if that's something you use frequently. So there you have it. That's a quick look at build 21354. Thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.